Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to the third and final installment of reduce noise in your sensor measurements with an active low pass filter. And if you saw parts one and two, you know that this is more than just an active low pass filter. We also had an amplifier gain stage. So it's more of a sensor signal conditioning circuit. And before we get started, I think it's worth mentioning that I will be selling this board on my website, forstronics.com, if you want to purchase it. Of course, just like all my projects, it's going to be open source. So if you want to get the PCB files and the simulation files yourself, you can get them from GitHub. But like I said, I'll be selling the circuit on forstronics.com. So here's just a reminder of what we did in part one and two. If you haven't seen those yet, I'd recommend that before we dive into three. So in three, we're going to get our circuit. I already have it put together and we're going to do some tests and see the results. Okay, here's a reminder of the circuit. So I have the picture from LT Spice that we did to simulate our design. And then in the bottom right, you can see a picture of a board that I built up. So, you know, here we have the inputs, the screw terminals, I put them in there. So, you know, you can put a variety of uh, different types of wires in there as the input. And then here, here we can see our 33K resistors and then our two C1 and C2 are our filter capacitors, the 10 nanofarad capacitors. And of course, here is our op amp, the TLV314. So that represents our Salen key low pass filter. And we have it at a cutoff frequency of about 482 Hertz. This other capacitor down here is just a bypass capacitor that we added to take any power supply noise and create a low impedance path to ground for it. So we have a nice clean signal. Then next we have the other op amp is our amplifier gain stage. So if we look at, um, I have the, the resistor numbers different than in the simulation, of course they'll match the PCB design, but R3 is gonna be R4 on the simulation, the 1K resistor, and then R2, which is labeled R4 on the board, is our adjustable 10K potentiometer. So we can control the gain or adjust the gain using R4, and then of course C3 is also a bypass capacitor to ground. So that's just a reminder that was all discussed in parts one and two. Okay, let's look at a video of this board in action. Okay, now you're seeing the board you just saw in the picture, but all hooked up. Here I have the sensor input, you know, going into the screw terminals. And right now, I'm in this video, I'll show you that I'm simulating the input with a function generator so we can test it under different conditions. And we'll see that. And then I have my power and ground coming in. And all I'm doing for that is I'm just using an Arduino Pro Mini to power this. So I'm using 3.3 volts and ground. Now you could use five volts. I believe the TLV314 can go up to 5.5. I might be off there, check the data sheet, but you could use five volts. I'm using 3.3. And then what you're seeing here is an oscilloscope probe connected to the output and then the clip from the oscilloscope probe connected to the other ground connection. So we're gonna test this circuit to see it in action. Spoiler alert, it works pretty well. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this on and I, what happens is I zoom out a little bit so you can see the setup a little better. It does get a little blurry, but here's the Arduino that I'm using just to power the board for now. And uh, I have another, I should, I should mention this, I have another oscilloscope probe connected to the input that's coming from the function generator. So on my oscilloscope, we're gonna see the function generator signal as well as the output signal from the circuit so we can compare them. So what I'm gonna do now is go to the function generator so you can see the setting. So if you're not familiar with a function generator, this is essentially you could call it an arbitrary waveform generator here. You can see they call it a waveform generator. But basically, you can do a lot of different waveforms or signals to, to test your circuit or to test the design. And so this is two channels. You're looking at channel one. And what I did was I set up a 60 hertz sine wave at one volt peak to peak. And I gave it an offset of 500 millivolts. So there's no negative voltage. It goes from zero to one volt, the sine wave does. But what I also did is I modulated it with white noise. So you can see the bandwidth of the noise is one megahertz. So it's gonna have 
frequencies going up to one megahertz in this noise signal. And, and what I'm doing here is I'm simulating my sensor signal with a lot of noise on it. Now the sensor's not going to have this much noise on it, but I want to show you this for example purposes. And so this is an AM modulation, so I'm outputting that into the input of our filter circuit. Now we're going to look at the oscilloscope to show the input and output signal. So I'm going to pause it right there. On the bottom, here's our input signal, and we can see the noise on it, right? We can see that noise that the function generator added. And on top, that's our output signal. So I have those two oscilloscope probes. This is the input from the function generator. Here's the output. We can see we get a nice, clean output. Remember, 60 hertz, and we have a lot of noise on this. So we're actually attenuating the noise pretty well. Once again, we're not going to have this much noise in real life, but this is just for an example purpose. Okay, and you can kind of see the noise moving around, and I think that's about to be the end of the video. Okay, now that we saw the example video where we saw a test to show that the circuit appears to be working pretty well, let me show you some other oscilloscope captures to kind of show some other tests on the circuit. I didn't want to do these all with the video because there's a lot of kind of setup for each. But here I want to show the cutoff frequency. So remember, at the cutoff frequency for the low-pass filter, we would expect the signal to be attenuated, the voltage or the amplitude to be attenuated by 6 dB, which is about cutting it in half. So here is the signal at 60 Hz. Once again, I'm still using the function generator. And what I did is I turned up the gain a little bit. So we have an input of a 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal. We're actually getting, you can see the measurement here, about 3 volts out. So there's our 60 Hz signal. Then what I did is I still used a sine wave and I just turned up the frequency of the sine wave and then adjust the oscilloscope, the, the time domain. You can see they're different, one millisecond versus five milliseconds. And I put it to about our cutoff frequency of 580, excuse me, 485 hertz. And you can see now the signal is about 1.56. So just about cut in half, a little bit less you can see at the cutoff frequency we get about 6 dB. So that's that's looking correct. That mirrors what we saw in our simulation. So that's that's pretty good. Here's an example of the amplifier gain. So this is by me adjusting that potentiometer. So here, remember one of the reasons we put in that gain stage is so we could take a small signal and scale it up so we cover the full range of an ADC on a chip that we might be using to make the measurement. And by the way, we want to take up the full range because that gives us better resolution. So here I adjusted the gain so we get about 3.3 volts. And I just wanted to show you that. So we still have our in volt of 1 volt. We still have our input of 1 volt peak to peak. And we're getting 3.3 volt, 3 .3 volts peak to peak out. Now in this next picture, we're actually getting something very similar. We're getting 3 volts peak to peak out. But notice our signal's cut off or it's clipped. This is happening because I turned up the gain higher than the power supply. So I just wanted to show you this as an example. You know, you can turn up the gain as high as it can go, but if you run into the, the upper limit, which is our power supply, 3.3 volts, what'll happen is the amplifier will start clipping the signal. And that's because the signal can't go higher than negative Vs or the negative power supply, which in this case is ground, and it can't go higher than the power supply to the, you know, the plus, the positive power supply to the op amp, which is 3.3. So what happened is I turned up the gain higher than the power supply, and that's why we're seeing that clipping. I just wanted to show you this in case you build this yourself and you experience this. Okay, and then lastly, I want to show the results using the actual current sensor that I made this circuit for. First of all, you can notice some clipping, and I'm, I'm glad I, that's one of the reasons I just showed that clipping example, but this, this clipping was expected. And so here is the, the bottom signal is the input signal from the sensor. And so I'm measuring an incandescent light, and you can definitely see some noise on this. You could definitely see that it's noisier than the signal above it. So our filter is working. It's, it's supposed to cut out that noise to give us good accurate readings. Since the AC current goes positive and negative, you can see here's our ground reference, the supply to the op amp 
only is ground. So whenever it tries to go below ground, you're going to get this clipping. Now, once again, this was expected and I maybe should have said it earlier, but for the purposes I'm using the sensor, I just need to know this positive current signal because I really don't care about the negative. I'm, I'm expecting it for my application to be pre pretty symmetrical. So I don't really need to measure that. Now, if I did want to measure it, one thing I can do is bias voltage on the negative input of the sensor and to raise the voltage. So, you know, if it's going positive one volt and negative one volt, if I bias it with one volt, then it's going to go from negative zero volts to positive two volts. So there's a couple things I can do there. I could also on the op amp actually have a negative voltage so then the whole signal can go. The, the problem is though the ADC, remember the ADC can only measure typically zero volts to whatever the reference is. Uh, in this case I'm assuming it's VCC which is 3.3 volts. But I hope, I hope everybody realizes what's going on here. This is a very important point. Once again for my purposes I'm just fine with this with this positive waveform. So Something to keep in mind when you're using op amps is if you want to go negative voltage, you either have to have a negative power supply or you somehow have to bias your signal up. Okay, that's it for part three and that's it for this series. I hope you enjoyed it. I actually really enjoyed building this circuit up. I'm, you know, Like I said, I'm not a hardcore, really experienced analog guy, so this was a great exercise for me personally. If you're interested, once again, this is open source project. If you're interested, you could get the sensor board that I, uh, that I built in this tutorial at my website. I'm gonna have a couple different combinations of resistors and capacitors to give you a couple frequency choices, but you won't have a ton of them. And I may also sell the board by itself without the components for very cheap if someone wants to build it up themselves. So I'll do both those things. And of course, as always, if you have comments or questions to add to the video, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.